Hi, I'm Carl from OSP, and this is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about being clear what you're referring to in your writing with the editing code ANTI about our podcast. If you want to be a more effective writer, a more transparent editor, develop clear strategic thinking, or learn from our network of expert friends and colleagues, that's what we're here for. We divide our episodes across three themes, communicate, connect, and grow. This is a communicate episode. And we're talking about being clear what you're referring to in your writing with our editing code, ANTI. The anti-editing code falls into the word choice part of the editing process. It's about accuracy and terminology. In our documentation about this code, it says, be clear about what this, that, and they are referring to. Hello, my name is Felicity Brand, and I'm a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners. The editing code ANTI is about word choice, and it's about being accurate. It's about being clear who or what you're referring to. And it brings to mind that comedy sketch, who's on first? You don't want to confuse your reader. Technology communication can often be stacked with noun phrases or complex clauses. And sometimes they can be long sentences, which makes it easy to lose the thread of who or what you're referring to. When you stack noun phrases, which is common in communication about technology, it increases the cognitive load on the reader. So they need to kind of remember the points that you've made. If you're not clear who or what you're referring to, it's very easy to get lost. So that's what this anti-code is about. We don't want to confuse the reader. We want to be clear what we're talking about. I'm Christine Bueller. I'm a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners, and I do a lot of writing and editing throughout my day-to-day work, though I'd say me personally, it's a bit more heavy on the writing. The anti-code is just clarifying what this, that, and they uh, refers to throughout the piece. Me again, Jeffrey A. McGuire, call me Jam. I do a bunch of writing and editing here at OSP, and this code, anti, we spell it A-N-T-E, I'm multilingual, and one of my hobbies, frankly, is deconstructing words and learning about their origins. If you know the word antenatal or antebellum, anti means before, previous, antecedent, all of these things mean something before. Antebellum, before the war. Antecedent, before death or change, and antenatal, before birth, right? So, and frankly, um, in American English, uh, in its purest form, we use the word anti for the bet that you put in before you see your cards in poker or whatever game you're playing if you're if you're gambling. And in my mind, when we were capturing these writing principles and trying to encapsulate them in the codes, this was another version of keep your context clear. What comes before to explain something that I'm saying now? Let's explore how you use this code as an editor. As an editor, what we can do to try and resolve possible confusion in the text is to anticipate what we thought the author was going for and flag it and get the writer to clarify that. We can guess, but it's much better to get the writer to review that piece. So one way to resolve that could be splitting a sentence into two. Alternatively, you can add extra words We generally go for clarity. We're aiming for conciseness in our writing. But in this case, if adding extra words adds clarity, it's much better to do that than be brief and ambiguous. When I'm using the anti-code in my workday as an editor, I don't always know what I'm coming into as thoroughly 
as the writer does. I might not have as much background on the project or the client or, you know, a specific area of technology. Making sure that, like, all the pronouns, all the this, that, and theys that are being referred to throughout the piece are really clearly defined. It just makes it easier for me as an editor to kind of grasp the purpose of the piece more quickly. As an editor, anytime I come across a this or a that or a they, this means that so-and-so or they apply to a situation. I want to be so sure that the reader understands exactly what we're referring to. And that can be really hard. I said somewhere that the distance between uh, whatever the subject is and then adding a this that can be so far away that it can be confusing for readers. And, and we'd like people not to have to think too hard or decipher what it is we're doing. We're trying to be clear. So instead of saying this means so-and-so, it means, means these code factors imply that or not use a pronoun, but use a synonym or something just to be perfectly clear. Because we might have a situation where I am writing a case study for my client. And then, so the case data is written from my client's perspective. My client has a client who I've interviewed perhaps, and they're speaking about something. And if I start to quote someone and repeat things, I've got a client voice, I've got a client of the client voice, I have technology names, I have processes, I have implications, and that can all just get wild. So it's really important to get super clear about what is what and, and make those connections as obvious as possible. That's this weird form of context that I tried to sum up as anti. As a writer, how do you approach this code? As a writer, you consider anti when you're thinking about your address, first person or second person address. You need to be consistent throughout the article. At OSP, we do a lot of case studies. That can get tricky because we are writing for our client's client. And that means there's a lot of points of view in play, which means it can be confusing who you're talking about when. I would say as a writer, I use the anti-code like throughout the entire process of writing something. Technology can be kind of obscure. You know, you have to keep like teams, processes, platforms, departments, tools, languages, all separate and clear. Sometimes, you know, I don't know what something is either. <laughs> and so I think anti prompts me to ask more questions about anything I don't understand or that I may not know about. And so I think it helps for me to be more specific in my writing and just, you know, more curious about what I'm writing. As a writer, I try very hard to stay away from converting too many nouns into verbs, especially, and to some degree converting verbs into nouns, because I don't want ambiguity. So as I'm writing, I very much try to keep things straightforward and non-repetitive. So if I've said something once, maybe it's best not to say it or to put things together into one sentence or a bullet list or somewhere where I can make things clearer. So these vague references, this thing I mentioned, that time. As humans, we mostly understand that it's mostly fair to use it. It's not a mistake, but it's not necessarily the clearest way we can say something. So I'm trying to be clear as a writer. For the reader to have a great experience, here's why this editing code is extremely important. Anti is so important for readers because we don't want to confuse them. At OSP, one of our writing principles is clarity. The anti-editing code falls into this clarity area. When you don't have anti, we can confuse the reader. They won't understand. They may end up feeling, why, why can't I get it? We, we don't want readers to reread a piece of content to try and understand it, particularly when it's something that's avoidable through good editing. I think that the anti-code is important to the reader because it's kind of another signifier that what you're about to read is clear 
and well researched and it's like quality work. I know that I, as a reader, if I start a piece and there is a lot of this, that, they that is not explained, I'm going to feel like that piece is not for me. Maybe it's not for me as the intended audience. Like there's an acronym that I don't understand. I'm going to be like, oh, if I keep reading, I'm not going to understand what's going on, what's being talked about. That's why anti is important for the reader. We do a really functional form of communication at OSP for ourselves and for our clients. We want to help people explain things clearly, and we want to help people understand things as quickly and easily as possible. And in both cases, the clarity of explanation in the creation should make the ease of understanding greater. And I want people to be able to not struggle to learn that my client's offering gives them all these benefits. They could get this and that and the other thing <laughs> for using whatever it is that we're that we're helping explain. It's an ease of consumption issue. I, I really would like people to, to come in and get the point and move on better informed. If you're familiar with that old Abbott and Costello comic sketch, Who's On First, you'll know how important this code is. We'd love to see your favorite examples of a confounding piece of writing where the ante was not clearly established. Share your examples or questions with us via Twitter at open underscore strategy or email hello at openstrategypartners.com. This was one of the editorial codes we use at OSP. We'll be sharing more of them as we go. If you'd like to learn more in the meantime, come over to openstrategypartners.com. Have a look at our writer enablement workshops, case study offering, or get in touch to talk about your strategy or product communication needs. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this podcast. All the P's at OSP. Thanks to our clients who believe in us. Shout out to Patrick Gaumont for our high energy maple syrup flavored theme music and to Mike Snow for additional horn arrangements. Thank you for listening and subscribing about our three themes on the podcast. You'll hear from different members of the OSP team hosting episodes over time. Communicate. All things communication. We share how we tackle writing, editing, word choices, formats, processes, and more. Connect in-depth conversations with interesting, smart people about who they are, what they do, and how they approach their life and work as communicators, technologists, and leaders. Grow. We cover strategic approaches to understanding and expressing the value of what you do, including tools, templates, and practical applications. We also feel strongly about building a mindful, positive, human-first culture at work. That's bound to pop up from time to time, too. This podcast is us figuring out communication, connection, and growing together. Subscribe now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or the podcast channel of your choice. Follow us, suggest guests and topics, ask us questions on social media. We are at open underscore strategy on Twitter. Until next time, thanks for listening to Communicate connect, grow. The OSP Podcast. Um, we'll have to we'll have to work out something that combines the words aunt, ant, ante with an I and ante with an E and pretend that we can be super clever that way. Uh-huh.